It's raining. will clear shortly. This is Yellow Cake that Cypher was having the PF's transport. Before we met you, the boss recovered it from a truck crossing the savannah. Are there metallic archaea inside it? Yes. The Archaea metabolize uranium-235 to subsist. They must be stored inside Yellow Cake, or they cannot survive. So those biological traces we took for impurities were actually the real cargo. Of course they are deactivated, so they do not trigger a sudden enrichment. They are like baker's yeast. Yet, they do gradually enrich the uranium as they feed. I imagine you detected weapons-grade traces. Yeah, we did. And the malachite that was loaded on the truck had traces of uranium in it, too. So that's the flower, huh? Skullface was gonna sell do-it-yourself new kits. The uranium-enriching Archaea complete with the user's manual. And the ores with the uranium could be sourced by the client or provided by Cypher. Even the trace amounts buried in common ores can be enriched to weapons-grade uranium by the metallic Archaea. Proving that must have been the most important factor of the trials. That and the ability to successfully prevent detonation. So if the amounts of uranium in the ores are low enough, they can get past any inspection. And you only need a tiny amount of the Archaea to act as the yeast. No great challenge to smuggle that either. The first step towards saturating the world with nukes. His plan. That was not my intention. <laughs> my only goal in developing the metallic Archaea was to save the Diné. 
What made you think a tool for creating undetectable nuclear weapons would save your people? After 70 years, the Diné reclaimed the Navajo Nation from which we were banished. We bore all the hardships of poverty. But we were proud to live off the land we called our own. But in the moment the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, platform construction. everything changed. I don't get it. The nuclear arms race between the US and the Soviet Union began with the end of the Second World War. Suddenly, there was a massive demand for uranium. And it was our ill fortune that the ground beneath the Navajo Nation was rich with uranium ore. The Black Anna government set up mine after mine, and many of the Diné worked them. Never informed of any danger. Every day, they went to work with no protection. The slag was simply piled out in the open. When rain fell, uranium traces left behind would seep out. And when the ground dried, it was blown about as dust. Land and water were contaminated, irradiated. Many of us became sick and died. That pain lives on to this day. I have no idea. Wanting more than anything to revive the land my forebears left to me. I was delighted about discovering microbes that eat uranium. If they could be domesticated, I believed we could rid our land of uranium. Were you successful? No. The research called for funding on a colossal scale. But nobody was willing to invest with no prospect of a return. And that's when Skullface showed up. Correct. I can save you and your people. We share the same will. That is what he said to me. And I believed him. Black Anna forced me to abandon my uranium cleanup work and focus on nuclear weapons. And he held all the Diné hostage. Today, the uranium mines within the reservation are finally closing down. It is simply less expensive now to source uranium overseas. New victims, different places. But uranium is a tactical resource. To rely on a foreign country for it is a difficult decision to make. And he was in the perfect place to influence that decision. He could have condemned your people to the mines forever. The contamination comes not only from uranium. The fallout from the Nevada nuclear tests also settled on our lands. As if our fortune were not already bad enough. We are also downwinders. To save the Diné, I must complete my original research. Code Talker, haven't seen you eat a single thing since you got here. Let me guess. Photosynthesis? Oh? What makes you say that? Well, a long time ago, I knew someone with a similar ability. Well, you are correct. Most of my body is covered with parasites. I supply them with water, and in return, I receive sugars they produce when exposed to light. Mm -hmm. It isn't just my skin either. The parasites also act as my eyes. They have replaced many of my internal organs as well. It is thanks to them that I live on after over a century. How did you obtain them anyway? Through your research? I would like to say as much, but there is more to it than that. Let me take you back 20 years. I had hit a dead end with my parasite research. Then I was approached by a foundation. They said they had a sample of an unusual strain of parasite. 
Which foundation? Apparently, they had links to ARPA. But that is all I learned. I was somewhat ignorant of the ways of the world. Just being able to study it was enough for me. Yeah, I've heard that before. Go on. Half in doubt, I visited them to discover the body of an old man. Well, to be precise, his partial remains. A collection of parts, you could say. The man had died in an explosion. An old man, you say? His flesh had not decomposed. In fact, the tissue's cells were still metabolizing. The parasite had infected, or should I say assimilated with, the tissues and was keeping them alive. I became obsessed with studying the body parts, foregoing food and even sleep. Every day was filled with new discoveries. The parasite's biology, internal anatomy, life cycle. But there was only so much I could learn through observation. Target extraction confirmed. That's cut down the enemy mechanized unit's force strength. I had to live with them. So, you implied Boss, them. we have information on new targets. Check your iDroid for that predicted route. It was quite a gamble. Whether or not they would adapt to me. But fortunately, it appears I was compatible with them. Or perhaps, through my many years of research, my immune system learned to tolerate them. Were they that body's only parasite? Yes. However, there was a separate specimen that supplied its host with adrenaline in response to pain. And yet another that could control insects at will through secreting heterogeneous pheromones. I wanted exposure to them, to take them into me. But my wishes were denied. Their records, though, provided clues that helped advance my research. Would you care to join me? A life spent never worrying about food is a most wonderful one. I think I'll pass, but thanks. This has been helpful. Skullface has finally burned out. The world is rid of his existence at last. Was he still alive? You could say that. But you could also say he'd been dead for decades. What's that supposed to mean? Biologically speaking, it's hard to say how much was his life. Side effects from the treatment? No. The primary effect. Keeping a dying host alive as long as possible. That is the whole point. But in the end, he grew too dependent on his children. Hmm. As if he had any other way to keep on living. He first underwent parasite therapy before the Soviet Union became his home. His body was horribly burned. Fire washed across his thin young frame and stole his skin and his throat, even his lungs. Only through repeated therapies could the parasites keep him alive. Most of his life became something the parasites gave to him. And then he lost the ability to die. That is correct. The parasites live on past the host's death. Still aiding. Target extraction confirmed. That's cut down the enemy mechanized unit's force strength. ...to extract them from the host cells. There is no way of knowing... You gotta extract him? ...his body would die. The only choice was to burn the host. We have information on new targets. Check your iDroid for that predicted route. And I am one to talk. When my life is snuffed out, I expect you to treat my body the same way. And when I burn, I will truly be one with my children for the first time. You say there were three English vocal parasites? According to Skullface, yeah. Skullface had two of the English strain with him. You burned both of them. 
There was an oil fire. I tossed him in. So that just leaves one. And you tell me Skullface said he used it. He said it was very close to me. Very close. One of your comrades. Or someone ordered to kill you. Or he could have been speaking metaphorically. Hmm. Metaphorically? Close to your spirit. Close to your heart. Someone who either loves you or despises you. The second one makes a long list. Whichever it is, act with caution. Skullface implanted someone with the English language strain. Who it is is irrelevant. Why? I tell you what Skullface really meant. Very close to you means you will be exposed. Mm. All the infected here have been given the Walbachia. Even if the vocal cord parasites infect them now, they cannot reproduce. But if there's a different host among us, host to the English strain... If that were the case, we'd see the symptoms. What about the non-English speakers? We have plenty of those, but the staff use English as a common language. But if that someone has not spoken English yet, and begins to speak it now, there'd be another outbreak. The final mating pair of the English strain must be found immediately. Skullface is gone, but his threat still remains on this base. Do you see what the final mating pair is? With him dead, those parasites are the stain he wished to leave upon the world. His thirst for vengeance in the flesh. Think. Does anyone here bear a grudge against you? Who would target you specifically? The ethnic cleansers that code... The target has left the mission area. It's too late to eliminate that one. Just focus on taking out the remaining targets. It was Cypher who started developing the vocal cord... Boss, we spotted a four-wheel drive transporting a prisoner. It's not part of the mission. Do you think you can bust him loose? Just if you have the time to spare. The map has been updated. You say there were three English vocal parasites. According to Skullface, yeah. Skullface had two of the English strain with him. You burned both of them. There was an oil fire. The ethnic cleansers that Co Talker mentioned, they were in Skullface's true goal. All we have is circumstantial evidence, but Enemy here's my theory. Detected. It was Cypher who started developing the vocal cord parasites as bioweapons, parasitic weapons, and Africa was the testing ground for them. As Code Talker said, their purpose is the ethnic cleansing of only those who speak a particular language. So they could do a weapon of mass destruction to eradicate specific groups, races, ethnicities, or colonies by the language they speak. Or a kind of absolute language control. Or maybe a tool for those arrogant fools to build some misguided utopia. I can see plenty of uses for them. However, in practical terms, they wouldn't be as dangerous as you'd think. Counteracting the parasites is easy, after all. Cut them out of your throat to save your life, or just don't talk. That also prevents the infection from spreading. So if the international community were to find out about them, they'd no longer be the threat they were conceived to be. In which case, their targets would be limited to minority groups as a deterrent or a terrorist tool. It's hard to imagine Cypher developing something like that as a main weapon for their arsenal. That leads me to think We've only tugged on one little thread in Cypher's grand tapestry. An obscure corner of their work, possibly forgotten altogether. In any case, things changed. When Skullface was forced to relocate to Africa and he saw that thread dangling. All the time he continued that research, he was secretly following his own agenda. The ethnic liberator parasites. His English language strain. Skullface said there were only three samples of the English language strain parasite, and I think we can believe him. Bringing his ethnic liberator's plan to fruition depended on creating an English version of the vocal cord parasites at all costs. 
but an English strain would have been useless to cipher. Worse, it could have destroyed everything they'd built. It was the one type they couldn't allow. That means Skullface was forced to develop his English strain out of sight of Cypher's network. Naturally, he couldn't use the greenhouse facility Cypher had set up and filled with guinea pigs. Skullface must have found some secret place to create his precious few English parasites, hiding all evidence like a man cheating on his wife. Somewhere, an entirely standalone environment. And when his plan entered its final phase, he must have made the place disappear. Some little room could be anywhere, but now nowhere at all. The guerrilla's offensive will be ending soon. But to Boss, there's still time left. Take out as many vehicles as you can. Skullface was telling the truth. There were only ever three samples of the English language strain. Why activate Sahelanthropus in Afghanistan? A target has left the mission area. There's no way to eliminate it now. Head for the remaining targets. ...a new type of nuclear weapon and successfully deploys it in Afghanistan. You've got other targets closing in. You can check their predicted route on your iDroid. ...to the glory days of the Cold War. The threat it poses reignites the nuclear arms race between the world's major powers. The demand for nuclear weapons increases around the globe. What if you then introduced a nuclear weapon anyone could get their hands on? Non-nuclear nations, militant groups of all shapes and sizes, they'd all jump at the chance. Soholanthropus was a marketing tool to sell nukes all around the world. Clouds but I think it's safe to say that plan was stamped out before it got up and running. The world's intelligence agencies never did turn up anything conclusive on it. After all, Sahelanthropus vanished before word could spread. Everything that's happened is already a fading memory, never to join the pages of history. Except for Cypher. Cypher won't forget. They'll already be working on something, quietly beneath the surface. They'll use the pieces of data scraped together from this incident to build their own bipedal weapon. It'll take them a long time to complete it, but for now, the greed sector have found their new life's work. We'll have to be ready, too. Analysis complete.
coming too. Roger that. We'll pick it up. I wonder what kind of secrets are buried in it. I'll let you know if we learn something. Got a report from the intel team. Remember how the man on fire was crushed by Sahalanthropus? Extraction well, the arrived at Metabase. Could he really be dead? Development Boss, project head has for been added. Boss, supply outpost and secure the man on fire's body. If Skullface was right, and a thirst for revenge can turn a man into a demon and keep the dead alive, then this man on fire who's been coming after us ever since you woke up, well that just might be what's left of our old friend Volgan. You mentioned that the man on fire was crushed under some philanthropus in its hangar. Yeah. He was caught under the wheels of its transport platform. Yeah. But his body wasn't found. What? We searched the area the moment we arrived, but there was no trace of him. I wasn't hallucinating. I know. I trust you on that. That means someone must have taken the body. When I got there, everything was still as it was. Even Skullface hadn't been touched. I can't see a reason to sneak into a place like that and drag out the biggest, heaviest guy there. What are you getting at? The only option left is... He got up and walked away. That platform ran him over. Just ran him over. You're saying that's not enough? I don't want to believe it, but maybe not. He shrugs off bullets, even rocket strikes. There's no reason to think that would finish him. It seems ridiculous, but I'll start gathering eyewitness accounts just in case. If you dig up anything concrete, I want to know. You'll be the first, if I dig anything up. But I hope to hell I don't. No kidding.
I barely recognize you, Colonel. Skullface used your thirst for revenge against Big Boss, did he? Find Boss, up completed. I've updated the mission list. We've received some new job offers. The details are on your iDroid. Anything? Still living up to her name. How about you drop the act? Who infected you with a parasite? We can't let her talk. Put it back. All I want's a name. That won't trigger anything. Tell me. Tell me! Your lungs have been barbecued. This traces of rubbing alcohol in your alveoli. This was found adhered to your lungs, intact. A petal, white star of Bethlehem. The hospital. Skullface sent you to Cyprus to kill Snake. You were burned inside and out. That should have been the end of it. But, all things considered, you look pretty damn healthy to me. We have Skullface to thank for that, right? I was the only one capable of applying them to parasite therapy. Until he stole them from me. Why are you here? Did Skullface send you? Or did you have your own score to settle with the boss? Refreshing? Salt water. No! She'll die! His life isn't yours to take. Enough! That's enough. If she wanted to kill the boss, he'd already be dead. Same goes for us. She's had plenty of chances. She can't talk. She's not here to kill anyone. I'm wasting your time. It doesn't matter why she's here. She works for you now. She's in love with the legend. What makes you so sure? I was the same way once. What if she's a spy? What if I'm a spy? Are you? 
go on all day. Boss. Let her go. She won't speak, so she can't spread the infection. <laughs> で、ザ。ベラガナ。ゲスネタ。Oh, Nista. Nice 